Today we're going to show a incandescent bulb loaded air core secondary. We have two incandescent bulbs in series. Cross the LC loop, top coil forms with its resonant capacity. Shown in front. We have first the voltage across that LC loop. On energized field state, we have 332 volts. 332 volts is not yet engaged across the incandescent bulb load. The reason for this is so that we can note the full amount of circulation of the secondary without being loaded down by that incandescent bulb. We've also got an amperage meter on the incandescent bulb and every Six volts is equivalent to one milliamp in this frequency. Now we look then at our input circumstances. We have not energized the field. We got 0.3 on phase one, 0.3 on phase two, 36, 37 on those first two phases, and we got 0.2 phase amps on that third phase. There's our delivery lines. Front three meters are our voltages. We have not energized the field yet. The purpose of doing this is to note the various changes that occur when the secondary loop is brought out of the vicinity of the primary loop. This is the first thing that we're going to do. And again, we note we have 300 some volts across that secondary for anything we have. Okay, we're going to go pick the secondary up. Notice some differences. We're at 0.22. and close, we should be able to go open and close of switch with that coil to show us the same thing. We ought to be able to see 0.21 amp on layer 3. Now we're going to open and close that coil switch. volts across the secondary. Now watch what happens. I'm reading two point some milliamps for some reason. Shouldn't be doing that. We haven't hooked it up yet. But now we'll read the real circulation through the bulb, which means we'll be attaching the load. Down to nine volts. 
not much of an output voltage at all. Because of the fact that the bulbs have a nonlinear resistance, it, the resistance of the filament will increase tenfold upon its rating of incandescence, which is 30 milliamps. So right there, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in there and we're going to have to put this device at about 9 volts operation to get the 30 milliamps to go through there. And we're going to take the voltage meter out of the picture because of problems we've had before with blowing voltage meters. operation then you can see the fluctuating aspect of this illumination and we'll go look at our driving circumstances now and then we'll pick the coil up and off the source and show the illumination go on and off The problem with having a voltage meter across the circuit at this point is if, you see there's a flare up, is if uh, in fact the circuit goes open, the load goes open the circuit, it will exceed the 750 volt rating of the meter and uh, unfortunately during experimentation we fried two of these meters inadvertently being placed in loads where fluctuations like this could accidentally happen. So we back up now. Auto operating circumstances. Looks like we've got a lot of amperages on the outer pancake coils. Only one amp through the middle. And then we've got our various phase amperages. Our voltage distribution doesn't seem logical. We got a higher voltage on the left, 12 volts, 8.3 to 0.9 in the middle, 10 volts to the right. These are widely cyclic voltages, pardon me, I wasn't paying attention there. Okay, for final then, we need to try to get the input and output conditions in one frame. Well, hopefully then, we can lift that load and note the differences in our amperage. We're at 35 milliamps amperage consumption. We haven't shown the voltage for that, it's in the 200 volt range. We'll pick that coil up now and notice the differences on input. We're at 3.6 amps around in there on our third layer. That went up to 4 amps some on this connection of load. Middle amperage stays the same at one 